Gregory. Anthony is a research fellow at the Independent Institute and uh, author of The Power of Habeas Corpus in America uh, and a really good friend. Anthony, it's so awesome to see you again. Hey, Kyle, it's great to see you. Uh, you read the, the Slate article, right? Or the, no, the Salon, Salon. You read the Salon article a little bit. This is ridiculous. I think it was originally published uh, on Alternet. And I'm finding more and more on leftist websites, like especially, I think Alternet fits that description more than Salon does. Um, this idea that libertarians are too stupid to realize like public goods issues. I mean, I know. it, it kind of reminds me of that article that you wrote a while back about how the more, it seems like libertarians are specifically attacked on leftist blogs these days, maybe because they actually fear us now. Yeah, I wrote that, I think, in 2011. Yeah. Why the left field fears libertarianism when there was just the beginning of this. Mm -hmm. And now there's this whole segment of progressives who think that we're like, you know, they get all McCarthyist on us. Uh, they think we rule everything, that the reason the weirds of financial collapse was because of us. Uh, you know, there were, before, you know, 2008, there were like seven of us, and now there's like 107. And they think, <laughs> They think that we're the, the reason for all these problems, um, and they conflate, you know, just, but, you know, libertarians do this, too. So do conservatives when attacking the enemy by conflating everything. I try to do this to be show I'm not just speaking as a libertarian here because, um, you know, libertarians will attack the left as though the left is like, Chomsky and Vladimir Lenin and Obama, and that they're all the same. And so if you believe anything that any of them believe, you're on the left. And they do that to us, too. They say, oh, you're like the Coctopus, Paul Ryan, uh, crazy anarchist movement. You want to abolish the government through the Republican Party and all these kind of incoherent conspiracy theories. But yeah, that, that article was attempting to be more about the issues and I thought it was really hilarious because it says oh it was like three things that'll make a libertarian's head explode and these are you know maybe let's say we're wrong about this stuff well we've at least had art we've given arguments more than we get credit for in these kinds of articles public goods okay let's say public goods can get kind of tricky right let's mm -hmm. let's let's just stipulate that well what we, when one of your examples of a of a public good is like a street lamp, I think is in there is how would we have street lamps under libertarianism? I mean, do people really think that way that if I had a house or a business or a neighborhood association or a street if if we lived in a community or we would just let it be dark outside <laughs> of homes because I I'd be like, well, gee, a street lamp. Let's say, let's be, let's be really, uh, let's give the argument so-called the benefit of the doubt. Let's say it costs, you know, two hundred dollars to put up a lamp. I don't know, and I could say, well, I could go around to my neighborhood and ask everyone to pitch in ten bucks, put up some street lamps, and if someone says no, then I'll have to pay for it myself. But no way, I'm not going to do that because of game theory. So we'll just live in the dark. Forever. I mean, do people really... I mean, history is not like this. People put up public goods on their own. But, sure. but I just can't wrap my head... I mean, they really... Some of these people really believe that, like, if without the state, you know, no one would ever do anything for anyone else or for themselves, that we would just all... We don't like the whole Rhodes argument. Well, well, the street lamps is just the logical conclusion of the Rhodes argument, right? But Rhodes, I'm, you know, I think the Rhodes argument's kind of stupid too, because there's history of private roads and community roads, and because if I'm here and you're there and we're like, hey, I want to get over there, but there's no road, we're not gonna like wait till the creation of a government to figure out how to pave a road. But at least the Rhodes argument. There's holdout, there's issues of enclosure, there might be someone in the way, 
who doesn't want their land or, you know, that it's a little complicated. But once you have the road, the idea that we're not going to have any light on the road because it's a public good. I mean, of course, the whole history of lighthouses shows that, which the Independent Institute likes to talk about is, the, uh, that Coase talked about is, lighthouses were provided uh, voluntarily, you know, people... I mean, the, look at, like, Christmas lights. There's a positive external... I'm too tired to make these arguments. I just... I think that we shouldn't have to make arguments like this. Maybe I'm jaded. You know, and I've become jaded, as you know, about a lot of our allies on a sure. lot of different stuff. But if we end up living under a state because of street lamps as a public... That's just... That's just tragic. You know, the liberals sitting there thinking, well, gee... We have this institution. It spies on everything we do. It takes half my income. Most of what it uses that money for, I disagree with. Some of it I agree with, but I, I agree with you that it's not done well. It's drone bombing people. It's making people mad at us, so they come fly planes into our buildings. It treats us like criminals at the airport. It locks up you know, hundreds of thousands of people every year. It lets immigrants die in these concentration camps everywhere. You know, it conducts torture. It, it, it does a bad to mediocre job at most things that I value. And most of what it does, I really, you know, don't think anyone should do. Or I agree that there's all these problems. But you know what? If we didn't have this institution, then I'd have to pay for my own street lamp. I mean... That just baffles me that anyone would think that. You know, I would give half my income just to fund street lamps. Right. If that's if that's what it came down to, so so we could have freedom. Sure, sure. You know, another issue that liberals like to go after libertarians on, although this is more of like a conservative libertarian issue, <clears throat> is the Koch brothers. And I've always found it funny the way that the Koch brothers become this sort of boogeyman in, in the mold of Alex Jones' Illuminati or something like that, where they're this unspeakable force that's never seen, but their hand is in just about everything. It's almost like a detective novel, you know, like uh, Raymond Chandler or something, where the, you, know, you begin with a very small issue, but the more you go up the, the ladder, you know, it just becomes this bigger and bigger conspiracy. And who's behind the huge conspiracy? Well, it's the Koch brothers, you know? Um, right. But you say that there, there is something to criticize there. And I always feel like you take a very level-headed approach to these things. So what is BS as far as criticism of the Koch brothers? And what, what is actual legitimate criticism? Well, some of the criticisms, you know, Rachel Maddow seems to just get things factually wrong when, sure. she's, when she's criticizing the Koch's involvement and, in, you know, particular campaigns, but, and then, you know, the idea, I've seen this idea that the Cokes want anarchy, and that's, you know, if only. I, I don't think they do, um, and they're way overblown in terms of billionaires who give to political campaigns, even conservative ones, they're not the only one, uh, <laughs> there's some strange kind of disproportionate focus, and also what's ignored is how much they give to uh, just basic. Uh, they're you know they're they're kind of these basic philanthropist stuff with just um, you know like museums like the Smithsonian and you know they give to all this stuff and then they gave money I'm pretty sure to the ACLU after 9/11 a lot of money and so there's a they're they're not just Republicans or libertarians in what they give to. I don't like uh, the extent to which they are Republicans. I don't like them supporting. I don't like any Republican politicians. I mean, I have kind of like a mosh, and you know, sometimes some of them are 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 better than most Republicans or Democrats. But I don't like you know the conservative uh, think tank stuff for the most part that. They're behind. And I, I, when I said I was critical, you know, I used to be, ever since like Sam Conkin, 
coined the phrase the coctopus back in, I think, the 70s. There's been a faction of kind of libertarian outsiders who saw the Cokes as having too, having a lot of sway in kind of the establishment organs of libertarian opinion. That's what makes it funny, is that the progressives are now, are, are now, you know, in on the Coke bashing, because that was our job first as libertarians. We're supposed to be the ones who, who sling dirt at libertarians. And now there's 107 of us, and so the progressives, they actually are, are, have noticed us. So they notice that, oh, well, let's, let's attack these people. I find that funny because uh, the, I, I, I was very uh, – I only started getting defensive of them at all when, when they started getting attacked a lot. But that's my tendency. Sure, sure. Have a good one. Too. All right.